Edward Norton is one of the most recognizable actors of his generation. You know him from films like Glass Onion, Fight Club, and The Grand Budapest Hotel. But what you may not know is that he's also a successful tech investor and entrepreneur. He was an early investor in AI data company Kensho, and he co-founded both media measurement firm EDO and early crowdfunding platform CrowdRise. He's here with us now to talk about his latest venture, board presentation software startup, Zek. Edward, thank you so much for being here. Pleasure, yeah, thanks for having me. So let's start with the basics. What is Zek? Zek, um, we, we, we call it death to the board deck um, because I think, um, well, the, the, the quickest way to say it is that this is a, this is a cloud-based uh, platform for companies and nonprofit organizations to, to put together their board meeting materials um, in a way that's just massively more dynamic and efficient mm -hmm. and, um, and creates positive feedback loops on the board experience. Mm -hmm. that I, I should say, like, those of us who started this and put it together mm -hmm. really felt ourselves in our own experiences starting companies and dealing with boards and then being on boards ourselves, mm -hmm. that, the, that the dynamic of boards was a really broken one. It was a very, it was sort of this elephant in the room that nobody was dealing with, mm -hmm. a v very negative dynamics mm -hmm. um, often and an enormous amount of wasted time mm -hmm. on the side of companies mm -hmm. and management teams. Um, and we just thought, we thought, you know, we thought that this was something that we actually knew how to address. Um, what made you think that? Because we'd, we'd really lived it. And I, you know, it's funny, you and I were talking earlier about like why do things, right? Mm -hmm. Like what, uh, you were talking about efficiency and mm -hmm. I, but I, I, for me, the things that I can really lean into need to come from, be rooted in something I've experienced, you know? And I'm, I'm an actor and a filmmaker and stuff, but I, I've been serving on corporate and nonprofit boards for 30 years, mm -hmm. right? And I've started a couple companies and had really good board experiences and really bad board mm -hmm. experiences. And my partners and I r really, at one point, were talking and meditating on wh why, do, why is this so bad? Mm -hmm. Why is this something, this, and we started talking mm -hmm. to other people. What did you come up with? I'll tell you, I think it has to do with the fact that it, it's, it's how the tone gets set. If you, mm -hmm. think about, if you think about a board, it is often composed of people who have invested money in mm -hmm. a company or made big donations, like mm -hmm. an institutional foundation mm -hmm. that makes a big donation to mm -hmm. a, a conservation organization, right? They have skin in the game. They have skin in the game, but really what's happening is monitoring mm -hmm. and, and protecting mm -hmm. the investment, right? Mm -hmm. But if you set yourself into a role psychologically with an organization mm -hmm. that you're there to monitor them or to protect your mm -hmm. investment, mm -hmm. you're not creating what I would call like a positive reciprocity, mm -hmm. right? I think a company should be able to expect that a board member, a company has obligations to shareholders and to mm -hmm. board members and mm -hmm. to things like that. Mm -hmm. There's a certain kind of governance to it, but, mm -hmm. but there's two, too rarely is there mm -hmm. a real sense of reciprocal mm -hmm. obligation mm -hmm. to further the interests of the company or mm -hmm. to be an, a positive mm -hmm. extension mm -hmm. of the company or the organization. It's a defensive posture. It's a defensive fund posture. And, and then you get into underlying unstated mm -hmm. resentments, mm -hmm. um, sense of antagonism, mm -hmm. sense of, mm -hmm. you know, what am I going to share? What yeah. am I not going to share? You're thinking mm -hmm. about narrative and how you're going to mm -hmm. position it. Mm -hmm. and, and, and in a lot of ways, I think it is a deeper conversation. How mm -hmm. do founders and entrepreneurs and organization mm -hmm. builders, social entrepreneurs mm -hmm. too, how, how do you set the tone mm -hmm. of what you want out mm -hmm. of a board from the beginning? And that's, that's, a, that's a big conversation. Mm -hmm. And how do you establish mm -hmm. the rules of engagement mm -hmm. in some sense? But we definitely noticed that, that it was a very toxic dynamic that mm -hmm. companies essentially say, hey, we're mm -hmm. going pencils down mm -hmm. to prepare for this meeting, mm -hmm. that you know, the, the idea that in mm -hmm. 2023 we're building 93-page mm -hmm. PDFs in slide PDFs of doom, yeah, essentially. the PDFs of doom. 
um, you know, and everybody's had that experience. Mm -hmm. they, get the, they get the board materials mm -hmm. less than 48 hours before. You're expected to read this mm -hmm. thing. You do your job and get through the 93-page mm -hmm. PDF or whatever. And then you get there, and what mm -hmm. happens? It gets narrated mm -hmm. to you. Literally, mm -hmm. the same thing gets mm -hmm. put up. The slide gets moved mm -hmm. through, and it gets read to you. Mm -hmm. And you sit there just going, like, this is a disaster, right? We're not getting anything done. And mm -hmm. we vote on minutes, and we vote on mm -hmm. employee stock option mm -hmm. pools. And, like, mm -hmm. hours and hours and hours mm -hmm. go by. And we, and we really thought we can, we can crush that down, mm -hmm. make it easier on all sides, mm -hmm. and, um, and bring the best of what, what kind of always-on cloud-based mm -hmm. platforms mm -hmm. can do. Um, so so we, we've, we've gotten a tremendous response to it. Mm -hmm. Like people who are using it are saying that within one or two mm -hmm. rounds of their board meetings, mm -hmm. that, they, that they'll never go back, and that people are saying this is, this is transforming mm -hmm. Actually, the quality mm -hmm. of the experience. There's mm -hmm. a quantitative value we're trying mm -hmm. to fix, which is like mm -hmm. efficiency of time, yeah, and for everybody. But but there is a qualitative dividend that we want to generate out of it in terms of in terms of engendering um, a more positive use of that time. Mm -hmm. um, in, in part, by the way, it's built. And and look, you know, I, we're in this era, um, you know, in our adult lives. Mm -hmm. If you ran a company, you know, uh, 15 years ago, and you had to manage your stock certificates, mm -hmm. you dealt with law firms and mm -hmm. Excel spreadsheets mm -hmm. for cap table management. And today, mm -hmm. there's Carta mm -hmm. and other great cloud-based platforms mm -hmm. that allow for this business, boring business governance. Yeah. You know, even DocuSign or m so many things that we did on paper less mm -hmm. than 20 years ago. Even we're doing in the cloud. We're doing in these mm -hmm. platforms. We really, we really felt that this was in that category of kind of business tools that take mm -hmm. up an important part of corporate governance and just mm -hmm. defrictionalize mm -hmm. it in a massive mm -hmm. way, right? And, and, um, and I think that, I think, I think boards, boards, board governance and board process was sort of sitting there. Mm -hmm. You know, it's part of everybody's life four to mm -hmm. eight times a year. Mm -hmm in any organization. It's the DMV, nobody, it's the DMV, it's the DMV. visit. It's yeah. literally the DMV, yeah. and nobody, nobody's, nobody feels positive about mm -hmm. it, but no one's doing anything mm -hmm. about it. And, and, we, and, and we, you know, and someone said to me one time, like, what do you care? Why do you, why do you, why do you want to build a business software company to deal with board governance? I was like, well, because I live, because I'm, I experience it. It, take, it eats up my time. Like, I'm not liking this, mm -hmm. like, you know, and I, and when it comes to nonprofit organizations, like we, our, our CrowdRise, we built CrowdRise mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Into, this, into this company. I think when you can see what you can do mm -hmm. for mission-driven organizations mm -hmm. where, that are full of people who could mm -hmm. be doing lots of other things and making money, you know, mm -hmm. money in lots of um, other fields, and they're committing themselves to purpose-driven work, you want, orga it feels great to help mm -hmm. organizations like mm -hmm. that. So on the, non on the nonprofit side, we, we, we had that, that connectivity from our experience mm -hmm. at CrowdRise of really liking the idea of helping nonprofit organizations. Yeah, kind of sort of to this end, one of the things about Zex Marketing I found really interesting is this idea that over time all these things have changed, which is exactly what you're saying, but board meetings have been resistant to that change. What do you think it is? Nobody likes the DMV, but, we're, but we keep going back to it anyway. So why do you think board meetings were just sort of sitting there waiting for you, waiting for that kind of uh, innovation? Inertia, inertia is a strange thing. It's, mm -hmm. you know, um, Sometimes it's that thing where you say, like, people and organizations tend to try to deal with the urgent demands of the day, mm -hmm. right? And, and one can make the argument that something can be a pain point, like, mm -hmm. a, like board meetings and the way you prepare mm -hmm. for them and the way the presentations are done and what the nature of the conversation is. Mm -hmm. You go through it, and it's never great, mm -hmm. but you live with it. It's mm -hmm. like a manageable disease, mm -hmm. right? It's not, it's not killing you. Mm -hmm but it's, it's like a manageable disease that you've learned to just sort of be numb to. And I, and I think, um, you know, it, it, it probably doesn't stack rank way up at the top of like your organization's urgent priorities, mm -hmm. right? But if it can be fixed easily, mm -hmm. you go, hell yeah, like thank you. Oh my God, thank you, right? Um, be, and, and so sometimes I think someone just needs to lean in to, to that component. I mean, think about the fact that Think about how many things we do really efficiently in a mobile mm -hmm. configuration now. We, mm -hmm. we pay for stuff, we buy mm -hmm. stuff, we, we transact in mm -hmm. all kinds of ways we with watch so stuff. much efficiency. Right, we watch stuff, all these things. And think about the, the just the, this, is, this is the right audience for this mm -hmm. kind of um, granularity. Go for it, go, go for it, let's do it. We talk about being wonky, but, this, but like, think about the fact that 
let's say you're a capital manager. Let's mm -hmm. say you're someone who manages capital, mm -hmm. and professionally you sit, mm -hmm. you know, a half mm -hmm. a dozen board meetings mm -hmm. a week or something like that, right? Let's say you manage portfolio companies and you're on a lot of boards, mm -hmm. right? Like employee stock option pool mm -hmm. decisions, you know, allocations mm -hmm. and minutes, mm -hmm. approvals of minutes, mm -hmm. right? I would say on average in a board meeting, you might suck up 45 minutes to an hour dealing with those stuff. That's something you ought to be able to read about mm -hmm. and in the platform say, mm -hmm. I, I approve, mm -hmm. right? There is nothing that requires conversation. Mm -hmm. That should all be able to be done mm -hmm. offline in advance of the mm -hmm. meeting. And so should query, right? Mm -hmm. Like why shouldn't you be able to mm -hmm. query mm -hmm. management as you read and get, get the whole process mm -hmm. of kind of natural query refined mm -hmm. so that by the time you all get mm -hmm. there, you're having a conversation about the forward agenda, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. not like the numbers and the stuff like that. And there's no reason in this mm -hmm. day and age with the, with the dynamism of the tools we're able to build mm -hmm. that you shouldn't be able to handle a lot of that stuff mm -hmm. in advance offline. So I, I think you could say at minimum, mm -hmm. we're stripping away mm -hmm. a lot of that, that drudgery. Um, we're, we're trying to strip away the drudgery that, that makes everybody want to you know, punch mm -hmm. themselves in the face when they're, um, you know, <laughs> anticipating and even going through board meetings. So what are you doing at maximum then? <laughs> uh, at maximum? At maximum, yeah. What's, what's maximum? What's the, what's the long-term ambition? Can board meetings be not terrible? Oh, I what, tried to, what? yeah, like I tried to, yeah. I was trying to say fun. I was trying to say fun. Can board meetings be fun? Yeah, fun. I, I think they can be, they, they ought to be things that people leave saying that was really, really good. That was constructive. That was. Have you left a board meeting and said that I was have, really, really I good? Have, yeah. What was it like? Um, it was short and okay. it was focused on, on it was, it assumed, it assumed that people had the professionalism and the mm -hmm. facility to absorb the, the reporting that mm -hmm. needed to be reported. Mm -hmm. And the conversation was all about what can the people around this table do mm -hmm. in the next three months yeah. to advance critical agendas, right? And it, and it, and, and I think, um, you know, like a board should be an asset. A, a board should be an asset to an organization, not a hall monitor. Not a hall monitor. Yes. yes. And, and that's, and I think if, if, if anybody who gets, even with a single board member, when people get that experience of going, holy crap, mm -hmm. this is like force multiplication. This is, le mm -hmm. this is, it's such a good feeling. It really is like, wow, like mm -hmm. we've got, it's mentorship, it's, it's ex expertise, it's like mm -hmm. capacity to pick up the phone and efficiently do things, you know, and like if you're not getting that kind of, I think organizations that don't have a sensation that a, that a large percentage of their board is, is mm -hmm. kind of the wind under their sails mm -hmm. or is helping them mm -hmm. accelerate, that's, that's, then something's wrong. Mm -hmm. Like it, it shouldn't all be about, um, we're, we're minding the store, you know? Mm -hmm. Now for you personally, why tech? Of all the things you could be doing in your spare time. Um, you know, it's funny, I, we're in the era of tech, so people kind of use it as a catch-all. I, I, actually, I actually don't relate to the things I've done in an entrepreneurial sense in the category of tech per se. I think of them as like, because, you know, like CrowdRise was really innovative in mm -hmm. terms of social fundraising mm -hmm. for nonprofit organizations. Founded in 2010. Yeah, early. Were we, we, were we a, were we a, were we a, you know, a, were we bragging about our tech? Like, mm -hmm. not, not particularly. Mm -hmm. We did a really, we did some great user mm -hmm. interface in a mm -hmm. way. We gave you a great experience mm -hmm. and we figured out some cool stuff on mm -hmm. payments. Figured out but, how to make it safe. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and dealing with compliance with nonprofit orgs and tax mm -hmm. structure and all that. But mm -hmm. those are puzzles more than, um, that, that's not like true, like large language model AI, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Like that we, we weren't innovating in, in a sense. Mm -hmm. We were solving a problem. We were, we were facilitating mm -hmm. and, and helping figure out like mm -hmm. a new kind of, of, um, of, of mechanism mm -hmm. for people to do grassroots mm -hmm. activism, right? Mm -hmm. um, but, but I think some things I've been involved with do involve what I would call sophisticated tech. Mm -hmm. um, How do you, you know, define that? Well, what Ken Show was doing in terms of application long mm -hmm. before ChatGPT, mm -hmm. Ken Show's work on large language model mm -hmm. AI application mm -hmm. to financial market mm -hmm. data was, mm -hmm. you know, best in class, and it mm -hmm. wasn't hallucinating. It wasn't mm -hmm. undisciplined. Mm -hmm. it, and um, my partner Daniel, 
who founded Ken Show, mm -hmm. and then we we built EDO, uh, mm -hmm. a media mm -hmm. um, media measurement and analytics company. Mm -hmm. It really is one of a, a true leading mm -hmm. uh, academic, mm -hmm. innov you know, innovator, philosopher, mm -hmm. and and a, mm -hmm. you know, applied entrepreneur in large language mm -hmm. model AI. And mm -hmm. um, this is Daniel Nadler, who mm -hmm. founded Ken Show yes. and founded EDO with me, and, and now has founded this incredible um, large language model AI application for health. Mm -hmm. uh, medical research mm -hmm. called Open Evidence, mm -hmm. which I really mm -hmm. encourage you and everyone else to check out. I think um, if you imagine the capacities of ChatGPT, but applied to the incredibly important uh, uh, problem of mm -hmm. how do people keep up with the pace mm -hmm. of published medical mm -hmm. research and having an AI that's capable of reading, mm -hmm. read, has read mm -hmm. all published medical research to date mm -hmm. and is reading in real time all published medical research so that clinicians are able to fact check themselves mm -hmm. through plain language query on in a way that mm -hmm. is tr truly mm -hmm. unprecedented. Um, that's, you know, that's, mm -hmm. that's real. That gets you excited. Yeah, that's what about that excites you? Liminal because, because I think, um, I think at its best, what, what I think is really promising about AI is not the replacement of people mm -hmm. at all, but actually the enhancement of our own capabilities, mm -hmm. um, the acceleration of our own capabilities. My friend, uh, going over to the art, my friend Bennett Miller, who's one of the great, a great filmmaker, you know, has made many Academy nominated films. And he just did, um, at Larry Gagosian's gallery, mm -hmm. did the, uh, an art show of photographs mm -hmm. that he created using Dolly, um, the, the art AI platform. If you looked at that show, I think it was, it was, it was relevant and indicative of more than just mm -hmm. what AI might do in art. Mm -hmm. um, I thought it, was, it, it indicated what AI can be in general, which is mm -hmm. to say, AI did not create these images. Mm -hmm. It was this obedient servant mm -hmm. that let a great artist like mm -hmm. Bennett mm -hmm. compose and curate mm -hmm. images um, through mm -hmm. thousands and thousands mm -hmm. of iterations mm -hmm. that, that, that are expressions mm -hmm. of his mind mm -hmm. and of his intent. And completely singular to him, the artist. Completely singular to him compositionally, tonally, mm -hmm. in terms mm -hmm. of the contrast, in mm -hmm. terms of the subject matter, in terms of the mm -hmm. themes, in terms of the, the AI in no way replaced mm -hmm. or, or made Bennett Miller lazy. I think he, mm -hmm. he would tell you it was one of mm -hmm. the most thrilling artistic experiences he's had in mm -hmm. terms of his capacity mm -hmm. to realize what was in his head mm -hmm. in this fluid mm -hmm. way. Um, and I think that there will be lots of replications of that across different mm -hmm. contexts and different fields mm -hmm. where what we're actually finding is that what we're actually finding is that it's it's enhancing our own capacities mm -hmm. more than it is um, replacing mm -hmm. totally and wholesale mm -hmm. things and you, and you see it's, it's interesting because now we have this moment you have writers and actors mm -hmm. striking and mm -hmm. worried about mm -hmm. things like AI mm -hmm. I, I and I, I understand that I think mm -hmm. it's it's really important that the work that people do, mm -hmm. how that's ingested into learning models mm -hmm. and used to create mm -hmm. other things is a very, very, very complicated mm -hmm. question. Mm -hmm. And really does, it, it, it is the right moment to negotiate these mm -hmm. things. Like I actually think some people say like, why now? It's like, mm -hmm. yeah, net, net, it's. So what makes now the right moment? Well, there's two things. One, one is that the technology, the technology is hitting this kind of, this liminal edge where suddenly Amazing things are uh, amazing things artistically are being mm -hmm. generated, like mm -hmm. Bennett Miller's mm -hmm. show, right? And it points, it points to this to this now very like um, bracing and kind of thrilling moment of uncertainty of how, because it's so good. Yeah, how good can it be? Mm -hmm. And you know, does it fully wipe away the human input or not? Mm -hmm. I, I really don't think so. Mm -hmm. I really don't think so. I think that I think that great work on a creative level. Um, will be fueled by human imagination and human empathy. And I think that 
and I think that these things will largely mm -hmm. be, come to be seen as tools, mm -hmm. um, much like CGI, mm -hmm. right? Computer graphics mm -hmm. didn't ruin photography, mm -hmm. right? Um, or make cinematography mm -hmm. irrelevant. But, but I also think mm -hmm. that the truth is um, the business landscape of media is changing mm -hmm. right now a lot. And we mm -hmm. see that at what we're doing at EDO, where mm -hmm. we sit right in the center mm -hmm. of it because because um, compensation structures mm -hmm. with artistic unions, mm -hmm. you know, collective bargaining agreements were based on, they were based on an understanding of what mm -hmm. the long-term ultimate financial mm -hmm. performance mm -hmm. through ancillary mm -hmm. licensing of content, the long shelf life mm -hmm. of catalog mm -hmm. content, right? Mm -hmm. It was an agreement that said, yes, artists should participate mm -hmm. in the full lifetime value of mm -hmm. their product. Mm -hmm. When the streamers came along, they said, well, we just put it in-house. It doesn't mm -hmm. get relicensed, so it's, it's sort of a buyout arrangement. And so they got around sort of this idea of long-term involvement. Now, all content, I think what we're going to see very soon is that there is no linear television mm -hmm. at all. Everything mm -hmm. is everything everywhere all at once. It's on demand mm -hmm. entirely. Everything everywhere all at once? Yeah, it is. We are heading into everything everywhere mm -hmm. all at once in terms of content. Our, our kids will never understand mm -hmm. why anyone tried to line up their schedule around the viewing of something. Mm -hmm. They will always expect mm -hmm. that they can watch whatever they want when they want to. The big seismic shift is that people are realizing it can't all be through subscription, and so that's why all the streaming platforms are moving to ad-supported mm -hmm. models. And when, Ro mm -hmm. when Bob Iger is saying ad-supported streaming is gonna be one of the biggest growth centers mm -hmm. for Disney, people should pay attention mm -hmm. because what it means, really, in my opinion, is there will be no more linear television within five years. Within five years? Yeah, no question in my mind. Like there will be no, live sports will be through streaming, live concert, anything live will still be through the streaming platforms. You will stream on demand, whatever you want, and if you don't want to pay for premium mm -hmm. ad free, you'll just mm -hmm. watch it with ads. Network television, mm -hmm. ad supported network mm -hmm. television is going to be in an on demand context. And what that means mm -hmm. is suddenly Netflix is one of the largest television mm -hmm. ad supported networks mm -hmm. in history and that means that that's why it has to be negotiated now because the because it means five there's years a from whole now, different late. revenue structure is about to come and and the artists are right to say mm -hmm. we have to figure that out now because because it's on the it's on the cusp so i i actually think it's a very very important moment the crazy thing is where i really stand with the unions on this mm -hmm is that the pie is about to get bigger. Mm -hmm. Anyone who says the pie is, like I, mm -hmm. I'll make a prediction that I bet Netflix, as it becomes a fully ad supported, mm -hmm. as it becomes a fully ad supported Business. network, yeah. in addition to its subscription, it will, it will double its market cap. Like, it will I, double its market yeah, cap, I okay, here Netflix, now. I bet Netflix's, Netflix's market cap will go higher than anybody thinks it's going to go mm -hmm. when people realize mm -hmm. how effective an advertising platform that company is going to become. Like I think it's going to become one of the most powerful mm -hmm. advertising television networks ever in history and and that alone is going to be like it's it's going to and 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 that's why that's why I do think it's kind of baloney when you look at what the writers guild and the directors guild and the actors guild are actually negotiating mm -hmm. for it's like point 0 Per, you know, you're, it's tiny percentages mm -hmm. of that long-term revenue. Those platforms, those co companies, they know what's mm -hmm. coming. Bob mm -hmm. Iger has literally said mm -hmm. it. He, mm -hmm. When a guy who says, I'm not an advertising guy, mm -hmm. says ad-supported streaming mm -hmm. is about to become mm -hmm. one of the biggest mm -hmm. growth centers he of Disney, you, people should be paying attention mm -hmm. because what it means is they're fully aware of how lucrative and valuable mm -hmm. these platforms that they've built mm -hmm. are once you build in mm -hmm. a classic network ad supported mm -hmm. model, mm -hmm. especially because it will be the power of television with all the identity data under mm -hmm. it that digital has. So you basically have the granularity of targeting mm -hmm. that you get with Facebook mm -hmm. and Google, but with Disney's content. And, and that's gonna be insane. And it's I, happening I can tell you, right now. It is happening right now. Like, and Disney, they are really good at it really really good at it we work with them at edo and and i think you will you will see you will see that actually N netflix and disney and companies like that they are not just like talking their book mm -hmm. they are going to be able to deliver mm -hmm. an unbelievably potent new mm -hmm. mix 
mm -hmm. of content combined with mm -hmm. incredible granularity of mm -hmm. targeting because of the the, stre the streaming platforms mm -hmm. and when you marry that up mm -hmm. with with free tiers that you can get that content mm -hmm. and it adds I, I think it's going to command it's going to command premiums mm -hmm. that were associated with digital and stuff in the past and mm -hmm. it's going to it's going to be a whole new massive windfall for these companies and I think and I think that's why it, in some ways I actually think the issue of the moment for the artistic unions is not AI. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's a little bit of a boogeyman. Then what is it? It's, it's what's about to happen in the revenue structure on content through ad supported models that's going to be a huge windfall. Mm -hmm. And that, that's why the agreements need to be recalibrated right now for what is the artistic mm -hmm. unions, what are the artistic trade unions share of the because the new lifetime value of content mm -hmm. made by streamers is about to tr change mm -hmm. completely mm -hmm. and i think so it's it's the right moment and they're actually right it's it's um you know i i th i think i think um they're not asking in my opinion for anything that's crazy Edward Norton, we have to leave it there. Yeah, I uh, wish we didn't have to, yeah, but thank okay. you so, we, so much. We, we actually talked about two, uh, we, more yeah. than one thing. Yes, so we you talked get, about you several things. You should get double the time. I should get double the yeah, time. Oh, okay. Thank you. Okay. I, appreciate, I, appreciate, I appreciate that. Edward, thank you so sure. much. Pleasure.